welcome to the White Glove Demo for Catan History's Merchants of Europe. In Merchants of Europe, you play as one of the powerful merchant companies of the late Middle Ages, establishing new trade routes and trading posts throughout the continent. You win the game if you can deliver all of your commodity tokens to foreign trading posts. Merchants of Europe uses a lot of the same rules and features as another Catan classic, Settlers of America. If you've also played Settlers of America, you shouldn't have any trouble making the jump, uh, Glover? Glover. Earth the Glover. We talked about this. We had this same talk before the Settlers of America shoot. These pieces are not rocket ships, they're covered wagons. Merchants of Europe comes with a double-sided board, showing a Catanified map of Europe. For your first game, you'll want to use the short game side, which shows a whale in the Atlantic Ocean. Sort the five resource cards into five stacks, one each for lumber, wool, grain, ore, and salt, and place them next to the board. Shuffle the development cards and place them next to the board as well. Put the gold coins in a pile where everyone can reach. Choose a color and place your starting pieces according to the recommended setup diagram in the rulebook. Each player starts with three trading posts, one trade route, and one caravan, which goes on the trade route. Each player also gets three starting resource cards as listed in the rulebook. If you have only three players, pick a color and remove their caravan and trade route, but leave their trading posts on the board. These become neutral trading posts and don't belong to anyone. Each player places a number of commodity tokens in their storage space, then places their remaining trading posts on top of the commodity tokens. In a three-player game, you get six commodities and five trading posts. In a four-player game, you get five commodities and four trading posts. Return the remaining trading posts to the box. You won't be using them this game. Each player also takes their remaining trade routes, merchants, an extra caravan, one building costs card, and three gold. Take the 15 number tokens and separate out the five that have black arches. Find the hexes on the board with blank circles that also have a black arch. They should all be near your starting trading posts. Place the corresponding token on each hex. Make sure that the colors match up, Glover. Place the remaining number tokens face down on the compass rows. Finally, place the robber in any hex without a number. Now you're ready to begin. Glover! Look, Glover, I know you like sci-fi and all, but just once, can you go with me on this? This game is about a revolutionary period in Europe's history, as the once isolated cities of the continent, the constellation of Western civilization, began to interconnect like never before in a spirit of exchange and exploration every bit as grand as your favorite space operas. So what do you say, Glover? Will you give it a shot with me? That's the spirit. Like Settlers of Catan, you start your turn by rolling the dice and giving resources to players based on the roll. If you have a trading post on a hex that matches the roll, that trading post gives you a resource card of the matching type. Mountains produce ore, pastures produce wool, forests produce lumber, fields produce grain, and salt works produce salt. Yes, Glover, salt. It was highly valuable in the Middle Ages. You promised to go with me on this. If you didn't get a resource card, take one gold from the bank instead. If you roll a seven, no one produces resources or gold. Instead, move the robber to any numbered hex. You then steal a random resource card from any player with a trading post touching that hex. That hex does not produce resources while the robber is on it. In addition, when a seven is rolled, if you have more than seven resource cards in your hand, you must discard half of them rounded down. After you roll, you may trade and build in any order as much as you like. You can trade resources and gold with the other players. You can trade resources with the bank, three to one. You can also buy resources for two gold each, but only twice per turn. The Building Costs card shows you what you can buy with your resource cards. For one wool, one grain, and one lumber, you can build a merchant next to one of your trading posts. 
you may pay a wheat to move your merchant up to three intersections. Your merchant can't end on the same intersection as another merchant or another trading post, but you can move past these pieces on your way to a free intersection. If your merchant ends his total move on one of the purple or brown city sites, remove him from the board and replace him with a trading post from your storage area. If you build a trading post on one of these coastal regions, you immediately gain the amount of gold shown. If you build a trading post next to one or more hexes without a number, pick one hex, take a number token of the matching color from the compass rows, and place it on the hex. If there are no more number tokens of the correct color on the compass rows, you instead take any matching number token from anywhere on the board and move it onto the new hex. For one lumber and one ore, you can build a trade route. Place the trade route on an empty path. You must build new trade routes next to one of your existing trading posts or trade routes. You can build through another player's trading post if you have a route on one side of the post. Some paths are marked with a double arrow space. If you build a trade route on one of these spaces, you may immediately build another route next to it for free. Hey Glover, you just connected an isolated city site to another city site for the first time. Time for the money to roll in. As soon as a connection is made in an isolated city, every trade route along the shortest route pays its owner one gold. You get money from an isolated city site whether or not it has a trading post. For one ore, one lumber, and one salt, you can build a caravan. Place the caravan on one of your trade routes next to one of your trading posts. If both of your caravans are already in play, you may pay this cost to remove one from the board and rebuild it elsewhere. For one salt, you may move a caravan up to three trade routes. You can pay an opponent one gold to let one of your caravans move along their trade routes for the turn. Up to two caravans can stop on the same trade route at the same time. If your caravan moves next to an opponent's trading post, take a free commodity token from your storage area and place it underneath that trading post. Each trading post can hold one and only one commodity. You may deliver multiple times in a single move, but you can't deliver commodity tokens that still have a trading post on top of them. Lastly, for one wool and one salt, you can draw a development card. Development cards might let you move the robber, build free trade routes, or get discounts on movement. You may buy as many development cards as you like, but you can only play one a turn and not on the turn you purchased it. When you deliver your last commodity token, you win the game. Once you've gotten the hang of the short game, you can flip the board over and play the full game, which extends into Western Europe and features more commodities and a variable starting setup. And that's Catan History's Merchants of Europe, an exciting and educational... Glover? Oh, wait, what are you up to... See, Glover? I told you history could be exciting. 